Howdy guys, Rex here. So today we're going to review this Armasite WWZ dedicated night vision rifle optic. Okay, This is a four power rifle scope made for shooting in the dark that is actually pretty neat. And it's under 400 bucks. So it's like in the upper 300s, pretty affordable guys. This is something that like normal people could almost afford. And so I thought this would be a great first rifle scope review to do uh, for the series, okay? Because a lot of people are looking for stuff that they can use on a precision rifle or an AR or something where they can actually, you know, hit stuff in the dark with a rifle. And so a dedicated rifle scope like this is highly recommended for people who are going to be hunting coyotes or, or hogs in the dark, something like that, that is not going to break the bank, but actually still kind of works. And that's really the question of the day is how well do these things actually work? Are they total garbage? Do they suck? What are you going to expect? How do they work? All that business. And so this review, we're going to hammer that out. Uh, just a general overview of the optic first so that we know what we're looking at. This is a four power rifle scope. Okay. This is your standard starlight technology. Uh, you do have the assistance if you're in total darkness where you can't see, because this is just amplifying the light. Uh, but this one has an infrared illuminator that actually comes with the scope. It's like a little flashlight it mounts onto the side of the optic here. And you could maybe even mount that uh, elsewhere in the rifle on the quad rail if you wanted to get it up there. Uh, but this is an illuminator. So if you're in total darkness, you turn this on. There's a little switch in the back here. I don't know if you can see the switch, but you clip that on and actually I see it illuminating my head. <laughs> you can kind of see it a little bit when you crank it up powerful, but that'll give you a little bit of a boost. And we'll show you what this looks like in a second. And um, you have your turret adjustments here, okay? This is your elevation. And on the opposite side of a normal scope, normally the, the windage adjustment is over here, but on this one, it's on this side. And if you take this off, you can see you got a little elevation turns and they adjust very much like a conventional rifle scope. And actually the operation of this particular optic is pretty simple. And that's one of the reasons I kind of like this one is it's not complicated. There's not a lot of circuit boards, digital readouts, none of that business. It looks like, and I might be mistaken, it's all kind of analog technology, which I actually like because it's robust, simple, uh, hard to break, not sensitive to weird stuff. So you have a little like, uh, I don't know if you call this a rheostat type control on the side here. This is how you turn the scope on. And there's an off position when you uh, turn it counterclockwise, it turns off. And to turn it on, you just turn it clockwise. And you can increase the brightness of the unit and the reticle. And then you have your standard scope adjustments here, like you would adjust. This is how you adjust fire. And uh, just in case anyone's wondering, we did a video just on zeroing this thing and how it worked, how to zero it. And uh, just a, as a brief overview, this is gonna zero very similar like a budget optic will, like a, like a rifle scope, like a Simmons or a Tasco rifle scope. You do have to play with it a little bit to get it exactly perfect. It does say in the instructions that each click is 0.75 inches at 100 yards. So approximately three quarters of a minute on your clicks. And we found when we're zeroing this that it basically kind of moves like you would with the normal scope. You got to turn it and you got to mess with it. And ah, you got to get a little more than you thought you would. But after you do establish your zero, it pretty much stays there. Uh, so that's the nice thing about it. It wasn't very hard to tune in. It was intuitive, just like a normal rifle scope. So if you know how to zero your deer rifle scope, this is not going to be hard to do. Uh, the operation of this infrared illuminator, you just got to switch on the back, same thing off and then count you turn it clockwise and then you can turn it up and there's click settings there okay so you just turn it up like so also you can focus the beam on this so you can do uh more of a wide beam this is this is concentrating the beam smaller and this is if you just turn this deal it'll retract and it'll spread out your illumination a little more okay um and then you have your battery compartment here okay on the other side Right here, and this takes CR123 batteries, and you just drop one of them bad boys in here. I think battery life is around 40 hours of continuous use on this, which is actually not too bad. Um, it is a pretty hefty unit. It's a little bit heavy, um, and it's a little bit large of a footprint, and that's why 
this generation of scope is a little bit less expensive is because modern technology has really shrunk this stuff down, but you gotta pay for it. You gotta pay a lot of money to get something a more compact. But what I do like about this is it is built very solidly. It's rugged. Even the mounts are good. Um, and when we, when we mounted this thing up on the rifle, everything's built pretty stout. And Arma Sight in general, if you talk to the night vision expert type guys out there, I got a few contacts who are like some of the top <laughs> night vision experts and they can't reveal maybe who they are exactly. Uh, but they really, really know all about the really expensive stuff and the really cheap stuff. And um, the, the collective opinion I've gathered from people who run stuff all the time is that Armasite actually is one of the companies that does a good job on the affordable end of the spectrum. Uh, you get a lot for your money with Armasite in general. And one of the nice features about Armasite in general is they tend to, I don't want to say overbuild things, but they do make sure that the housing units, um, the mounts and everything like that is sturdy and it's built strong for actual use. And so it's not like super delicate. Uh, you can actually use this like a normal guy. Uh, so that's something that I like because I like to break stuff, okay? And we have a rubber cover. This is very important here uh, because you will cook these units if you take off the cover and turn it on in the broad daylight. That's not good to have. And we also have our focus ring here. This is for focusing your image, okay? Uh, so that's pretty neat. And we'll show you some footage here of what it looks like in the dark. And uh, my impressions of it was it was actually relatively easy to zero. It did hold at zero after we found that zero. Uh, I was able to hit uh, steel in the dark. We have a little reactive target uh, popper, a uh, magnum popper they call it, uh, made by shootsteel.com. And uh, we're smacking that in the dark. I was actually hitting a little bit low on the stand because the 300 blackout has such a drop on it. Um, but uh, it was pretty effective and it held zero. And uh, it has a nice crosshair. You can get the crosshair into focus pretty easily by turning this rear ring here. This is to get your crosshair sharp. So if you pick up the, the scope and you turn it on and you're in the dark and all this and you can see that your crosshair is fuzzy, turn this deal. If your image is fuzzy, turn this deal. Okay, that's your other focus. So once you get this thing tuned up, it's actually pretty nice. Now to tell this story, I was so impatient and so excited to try this I haven't seen one of these budget night vision deals in, in a long time. And uh, I was curious what the technology was. I mean, for under 400 bucks, I heard that these are actually pretty nice. So I took this out there so quick and I put the batteries in it, I ran outside and I turned it on and I start looking at stuff and it's like really fuzzy. And I thought, man, this thing sucks. No wonder it's under 400 bucks. This thing's a pile, you know? And uh, what I found out was that, hey, there's this, di there's this thing on these, these scopes called focus mode, see? Right here, you turn this and then it's like crisp, crisp, clear. And a lot of the other reviews I've seen, and actually a lot of the, if, if I did a Google search of the Armasite WWZ scope, shows a really, really blurry image of the target. And it is actually very hard to get a good picture uh, through this. Some night vision scopes actually have a picture mode because they got all the digital stuff in them. But on an analog, style device like this, the old school technology. You have to actually physically get your camera lens perfectly centered back here to get any kind of pictures. So it is difficult to get uh, photography. However, that being said, uh, when you turn the focus, it actually gives you a nice, crisp image in the dark. And so it's a decent quality. Now, um, how far can you see? That's totally contingent upon your lighting, okay? Uh, we shot this actually in a diversity of environments when we first did the review. On the first one we had, um, it was in the snow and it was like 20 below or it was, I don't know, it was cold. It was like zero degrees or 20 below. The wind was blowing. It was horrible. It was, and you couldn't be out there for like more than a couple minutes at a time. And it just, it was annoyingly cold. And in the snow with a little bit of moonlight, you could see pretty darn far with this thing. Um, truth be told... I think the first one I might have broke, so I'm making a confession here, uh, and I actually send it back, and the nice folks at Optics Planet were so kind as to have forgiveness upon my pathetic soul and send me a new one that I didn't break. And what I think happened was, there's um, a scope cover on here, right? This is a rubber deal, and you want to, on night vision, religiously always keep these things on the, the scope. 
because it'll burn out if you don't. But there's a pinhole in there. And that pinhole, you can actually see if it's broad daylight, and you bring this up, I can actually see when I turn it on through that pinhole just to kind of blurry, very lightly see uh, an image. And so I thought that maybe this thing was adequate to just lay on the kitchen table for a day while I was getting ready to do my review. And it was pointed to the west and the sun was setting. And I think what happened was the sun set and the sun actually went right through this peephole. And as it was moving, it created a, a semi-curved arc right across the center of the Very lens. Cool. Okay, and I think I, I cooked it. I cooked the uh, <laughs> the tubes on the inside, and so I fried it on accident. And if I would have read the instruction manual, guys, and I'll save you some heartache here, read the instruction manual on stuff like this because it is very uh, important to know how these things work. Um, it says to leave this thing on there, okay? So when you're not using the scope, they include this with the scope. This is like the cover. And it goes on like this. It's actually very easy to throw on. And you can zip it up like, like so. And there. Now it's protected. But I would say if we have to come up with five things that Rex recommends to do if you have a night vision scope is, number one, always keep it covered if you're not using it. Because if this lens cap that was on here comes off when you're not paying attention, it'll fry your tube and it'll destroy your device. And you don't want to do that, right? And so you don't want a big stripe going across from the pinhole, and that pinhole ain't enough. You need to actually listen to the instructions and put this damn thing on there, okay? I found that deal out, I think, the hard way. I was trying to, I thought that maybe something was rattled loose on the inside of the scope at first in the first test model I had. Uh, I, I thought that it was crappy. And actually, when I considered what I did, I thought back and with my scientific analysis, <laughs> I was able to determine that it was actually me that broke it. Uh, so don't lay this thing pointed at the sun for a whole afternoon just with this on here, okay? Use the covers. That's thing number one to consider. Thing number two to consider is the instructions also say when you're not using this, remove the batteries. There's a number of reasons. It'll preserve battery life. Uh, you might knock a switch on, especially when you put the cover on, right? It'll flip a switch on, and then your battery burns out. CR-123s uh, ain't cheap, so you don't want to do that. So remove the batteries. Also, if you have a constant uh, circuit on a battery that's not, like, closed, you know, it's like waiting to go, uh, you'll get corrosion. Uh, and you don't want to corrode this. If you set it down for like three months and forget about it because you're not going to use it or for a whole year waiting to shoot the coyote, take it out. First of all, the batteries are going to be bad. Second of all, you're going to have a lot of corrosion. Then you need to either clean it out or replace it because, you know, battery-operated devices that you're not using, take out the batteries. So number one, keep it covered. Number two, take out the batteries when not in use. It's all in the instruction manual. Um, the third thing to be aware of, and I hinted at this before, is use the focus. If you take it out and you look through it and it sucks, it's because it's not in focus. This night vision scope will give you a nice clear image if you focus it, okay? This is your focus for actually the image you're seeing, and this is the focus back here for the reticle, to bring the reticle into focus. So that's the third thing you want to be aware of. So those, those are the three super important things you want to remember. And then, of course, number four is make sure your mounts are tight, okay, on here. And number five is probably you don't want to get it soaking wet, okay. Um, we did operate this in rain the other night a little bit. It was just a light drizzle, and it can get wet. It's water-resistant rated. It's not waterproof. So don't take this scuba diving with your twin 88s on your back, right? Uh, that's going to probably not be very happy if you do that. Uh, so for this deal, you can get a little bit of rain on it. Keep it covered if it's coming down good. You know, you don't want to get it soaking drenched wet because it is an electrical device. Um, but that being said, man, like... This silly little goofy thing actually works pretty good. So if you need a dedicated night vision optic that actually works pretty good, but it's not going to break the bank, and you're not shy of a little bit of weight, this thing is under 400 bucks and it works. So what's the maximum range you can see on this thing? Um, honestly, for identifying targets, I wouldn't say much more than 100 yards if you're if it's a, a threat or something. So if you're using this for defensive applications, offensive applications, combat, shooting at two-legged critters, um, yeah, I wouldn't be comfortable shooting at one of them kind of targets in inside 50 uh, because I would want to make dang sure I was identifying that it was actually one of the bad guys. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so inside 50 yards. But if you're shooting at animals, 
you know, you can probably see out to 100 or 200 yards if you got uh, the lighting on your side, like a moonlit night or something, or if you got snow, it's going to make it a lot easier to spot targets, and especially if you know how to operate your focus adjustment there. It's going to be pretty good. So that was this scope. And the next video is actually going to be how to zero this bad boy. So stay tuned for the next video. We'll actually show you uh, all the details on how we took it out and played with it and got it to establish zero. And you can see Rex struggling in the dark to uh, refine his marksmanship skills while he's filming with one hand. So